Previously, I uh, looked at these t uh, series of books called The Solve It Yourself Mysteries by Osborne and how uh, they managed to use uh, still life photographs to tell very complicated whodunit stories that uh, I've never been able to guess once. Um, uh, after a while, though, uh, the, a new series was started up by the same creators and they seem to have taken on an idea. Hey, in these stories, what we're basically do doing is asking uh, ki kids to solve puzzles based on uh, photographs of documents and boxes and packaging and that sort of thing. I mean, it's all photographs. I mean, why do we need to take photographs? Why don't we just give them the documents, the photos and everything and, you know, let them take, take the map out, have a look, look at them and they can solve the mystery that way? And, you know, that's just what they did. And given how expensive that must be, that might actually be in the publishing industry, that was a, a big ask. But here they are. Here it is. Uh, I believe this is the first in the series. It's kind of hard to doc document. These are all sca scattered all over eBay for quite good prices. So yes, this is the puzzle adventure kit called the Murder Map Mystery. And instead of uh, instead of staging photographs, you literally have a sheaf of documents which details a, a grisly case. Actually, a very grisly case because this, um, as you can tell by, by the title, this has two murders in it, and we we have to prove the detective who gathered all this p paperwork's innocence, as he was blamed for the crime. Uh, uh, it's a it's another noir themed one, actually, a bit like uh, Who Stole the Black Diamond. So our first item is this newspaper, and it's it's printed on actual you know newspaper quality paper. They how, how much did this cost? They, they print everything on, you know, appropriate pe paper. They use several different types of manufacturing materials in this. But yes, we have a newspaper dated the 15th of October 1949. And as you can see, Millionaire Drowns. Howard Hughes' final lone fishing trip ends in tragedy. Um, and the rest of the sto story, what we're actually looking at, what we're actually looking at mainly is the, is the bullion case, which is... Um, uh, um, lots of gold bullion got stole from a big bank in a city that I think is meant to be Chicago but is never actually referred to it uh, so yeah that's pretty uh, uh, standard sort of gangster story and yeah we, we're gonna have a whole load of gangsters so so yeah this is actually like, like I say this was made by the same people uh, Phil Roxby Cox was the editor for this as is uh, Joe Pedley's the designer again uh, Gabby Waters did the series as well um, who was the writer for this anyway uh, doesn't say oh Clive Gifford was the writer for, for this series uh, the, the nar most of the narrative is actually presented in, in this piece the case book obviously uh, it, it, it's, it's actually written in full prose which it goes against what most uh, kids uh, uh, kids game books were about most usually you just have one pa paragraph and uh, a main pic picture or photograph uh, I don't know if you can read that. Oh, that seems to be quite good So, so yes into, into my office walks the familiar figure of beautiful heiress Melissa Pearls Malone You're really taking you're really doing this aren't you? I take my feet off my desk stick my newspaper in the drawer and try to look every inch a private eye You're succeeding. Don't worry so, so yeah, uh, and and in the narrative you you get this bolded text which tells you when to refer to to each item in in the casebook. So, what what items are we given here? Well, we have our newspaper. Uh, oh, that's that's later. Uh, we have a playing card with a code on the back. Uh, we have a threatening letter sent on the back back of a a receipt for an auto company. Uh, we have some B11s that the detective stole our hero everybody from the Stoneford Police Department yeah we're not we're not Chicago at all uh, yeah again again a lot of the, this is a quite a large info dump so you, you I think you refer to this quite a lot in the sto story of the murder map mystery uh, oh an invitation to the casino that the big boss this uh, baby face Hanson of cor course they have, a, have to have a child p um, posing as him Actually, I wonder if that's a uh, reference to Bugsy Malone. But yes, he owns this casino that a man's been invited to. Ooh, another coded me message on the uh, on a jail laundry service tag. Kind of odd. 
uh, some fo another a photograph because you know we couldn't let the uh, we couldn't let the director of photography go out of business entirely. Um, uh, so yes, who won this round of pontoon? That's probably a quite easy one. Ah, but do you know where everyone's sitting? Can you remember who has the uh, who has the appetite for chocolate chips? Who wore those white gloves? And I can't remember what the other thing was. Uh, ooh, the murder map itself. Not sure I should be showing this off. That's a kind of a big spoiler. Yeah, on one side you have the countryside, and again one side you have a metropolis based on a major lake, but it's totally not Chicago. It, it's got gangsters, but it's not Chicago. And more photos that have been cut up by a vengeful um, phot phot photographer. I, I'm not. I can't. I don't have time to explain. And the answers and solutions are all inside this sealed or previously sealed envelope. Uh, so, so yes, obviously you have to resist the temptation to open that up. Uh, obviously, I, I totally didn't do do that when I first um, tried to work this out. So so yeah, it it's all the same mechanics. You have to um, you have to remember everything you read on the way through. Um, uh, obviously, you can uh, have to look back over it. You have to cross reference a load of sources. You have to uh, use your powers of observa observation to um, to to, uh, to spot clues and codes. So it's all rather jolly, you know, apart from the whole murdering aspect of it. So, so what's the first? Uh, the first question is how how did you fi figure out that the uh, uh, that the threatening letter uh, item two has anything to do with the bullion robbery? Uh, oh well, it's it says in here that ten uh, that whoever wrote this note says that ten percent of the map's hidden stash, uh, the map w that was sent to Pearls Malone. Uh, is, has 10% of the stash that equals 25,000 and in your newspaper that you read earlier uh, the the bullion was worth a quarter of a million so 10% of a quarter of a million is 25,000 puzzle solved uh, so yeah, it's all that sort of thing now there are only four of these sort of uh, mysteries uh, produced by Osborne because like I say it, it, it must have taken a lot to you know get all the prints and all the typefaces it's really uh, it's a very ambitious pro project, I believe. I mean, you don't see many loose leaf, um, you don't see many uh, sort of loose leaf uh, publications these days. Uh, I don't, and they're also a lot rarer on oh, on eBay. So I think they may have had a more limited run. When was this published, incidentally? Uh, 1997. Hmm. So. Uh, they did. They did do compilations as well. This is the Osborne Mystery Files, which combines two of these um, uh, sort of loose leaf mysteries. One's the murder map, which I already owned, and the other one is called Thief in the Night. However, I believe when it was produced singly, it was called The Empty House, um, because I, I only know that from uh, pictures online. Because there's, I can't find a, co a, a single copy of it. So yes, you have. Uh, you have a covering letter that explains that you're uh, in a new but rather dingy city called Metroville uh, at a at a party of hosting an art exhibition by the mysterious Julien Blanc. Uh, the painting, soup cans with old boot, uh, valued at a staggering ten million dollars, was snatched in the early hours of June the 11th. So, so yes, our most nitpicky detective, Sam Peterson, carried out the investigation, but then he was knocked down by a truck. Um, Ouch! Uh, 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 on his way to reveal the culprit. So, because apparently everyone's so impatient that they can't wait for the guy to come out of hospital, uh, we have to work, we have to follow the case ourselves. And on this very glossy uh, pad of paper is the entire case report. Now, I don't know. I, I don't know what actual case reports look like. Um, uh, not being a policeman, but. But but they actually do um, make the look very very clear with you know they that here are the here's the suspect uh, Miss Mrs Dora Brindle who judging by her actions in this I think might have ADHD or Asperger's which is a a bold, bold move for a, a kids mystery story to take uh, but then it, it's also quite helpful because she only wears a red dotted handkerchief on Thursdays so what. So what was a red hot dotted handkerchief doing at the scene of the crime? Because this took place in the early hours of Thursday morning, she wouldn't have had time to change it over. So did someone just assume that? Uh, I don't know. I don't. I can't remember. So so yes, this is 
So yes, this is mainly a transcript of, inter of interviews which reveal information about the suspects one by one, with occasional uh, input from local businesses like the, the taxi service who took everyone home after the party, etc. And again, we have a, let's have a look at um, uh, all the lovely feelies. Um, we have oh, and there's no there's no nice newspaper there's no nice newspaper style paper. They just uh, uh, these are just uh, newspaper clippings stuck to cardboard or meant to be stuck to cardboard. Ah, so here's where the alternative title comes from, Thief in the Night. The Empty House title comes from Julian Blanc's house, which he apparently has devoid of all uh, possessions because minimalism was apparently in in 2000. Anyway, yes, so the mayor of Metroville, he's another suspect, and, uh, uh, and obviously he's a bureaucratic cad, because, you know, all good detective stories need one of them. Murder Map has one too, Mr. Lebowski. Uh, oh, and this is a major piece of evidence, uh, a, di a diary page where, he, where the uh, culprit basically goes, I'm going to commit a crime and I'm going to write about how awesome it is that I'm committing a crime. Did I mention I'm committing a crime? No one will stop me because this di diary page is unfindable. <laughs> uh, but, but, but yeah, obviously this is Actually, this does pre present a quite interesting puzzle, as you have to be quite good at uh, graphology in order to work out um, uh, who uh, uh, who wrote that. Anyway, objects from the artist garbage. This is the program from the art exhibition, and as you can see, it's not being very fair to the world of modern art. I think they, I think I, I do think they are deliberately trying to make these um, paintings look bad. In fact, in fact, are they meant to be? Uh, are they meant to be? Um, were they actually painted by five-year-olds or actually I've just remembered how this one ends uh, the way the thief hides the painting isn't particularly insulting to the world of modern art I won't spoil it actually you know what I will spoil it in one of these newspapers um, you in one of these p newspapers mentions that the Metroville townhouse is featuring uh, another art exhibition for from local primary school students aged four to seven and we later find out that the thief hid, hid the painting there too. And also in this, um, also in this paper, they do say works particularly admired were a drawing of a tree, uh, a shoebox stuck onto paper, a picture of a funny face, signature unreadable. Why was the signature unreadable? Because this, the painting that was stolen, turn it upside down, and you have a seven-year-old's painting of a funny face. <laughs> I, I, I actually laughed when I, when, when I read that in the solution for the first time. I, I did work out who stole it and where it was hidden, but I didn't realise that's how they hid it. Uh, oh yes, the, um, the ADHD slash Asperger's girl um, uh, wrote, wrote uh, this for us. This is her exact schedule of what she did that day, which... Uh, uh, also a receipt for a handkerchief store. Um, can't remember what uh, can't remember what relevance that holds. Uh, yeah, although you do get a fingerprint, although I never managed to match up to any sort of fingerprint. Uh, a tourist guide to Metroville, so you can see how uh, it, it, it's your typical crappy small town that tries to big up every small bit of success it has. Uh, uh -huh. And well, yes, there's a couple of small things. Uh, there's the there's fa there's the Fab Cabs business card. There's a security card for somewhere I can't remember. Oh, security door entry card. I think you have to look up this code on a, like a massive list of codes, which is very fiddly and annoying. And ooh, uh, like I say, this this one does rely on you to use graphology to work 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 this all, all out. And uh, all of the suspects give their supply of handwriting, except for the me the evil corrupt mayor, who says, I refuse to supply a sample of my handwriting in my handwritten script. Hey, hey. So, I just realised, for official use only, is it a perfect match, likely match? Also, what's the tester's name and what type of coffee would they like? There, there's a ni there, there is a nice bit of sort of playful humour uh, that, that, under that undercurrents this whole thing. And of course the answers and solutions, because that is of course a very most important part, part of it, and you know, you'd be pretty stumped without uh, the answers and solutions booklet, wouldn't you? So yeah, uh, so, so yeah, these are more rare to find on the internet, but the ones I find, if you buy second hand, and this goes for the book, the, the photo books as well, uh, you can get them for really good uh, pr prices on uh, AmazonPlay.com and uh, 
uh, and eBay, obviously. In fact, uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, third-party companies that sell uh, second-hand book books and th things, so you don't even have to bid for them. That having said that, you may have noticed, you may have probably already thought of a problem when uh, ordering loose leaf um, murder mysteries uh, second-hand. Yes, missing parts, and sadly, I do have. I do have a puzzle adventure kit here with missing parts. The message in the mirror uh, is another sort of... Uh, I'd say it's an Agatha Christie uh, sort of style one because you have a, a, a big house with lots of uh, rich people who, uh, while, while a mysterious artifact disappeared. And what, what, is, what else is in the story? Oh yes. Yes, we're looking at a, a mystery... Um, we're looking at a non-existent country called Zakatak. Zack Attack? Wh wh who names the country that? Uh, it's, it's a very loose parody of Mexico. Uh, I say that because um, we're looking at ancient Aztec society. Aztec sort of, uh, sort of Aztec society. So yes, please help me. I am Ranoff Twining, the famous explorer, and I am in great danger. My troubles began when I was entrusted with an ancient charm called the Silver Serpent, found in a ruined temple in the distant land of Zack Attack. Not Mexico, honest. The very next day, the serpent was stolen from my safe. The circumstances were suspicious, as you will discover. Soon after, I came upon a chilling message mysteriously written on a mirror. Return the serpent to the temple within a week or, or, and a day, or you will die. Hmm. All very odd. So, how does this go? So, yes, here's, here's the case book that bring, brings it all together. It's just a small diary written by um, poor Ranulf Twining. Is that meant to be Ranul Fines? I don't know. Uh, uh, oh, a list of suspects uh, draw, drawn up. As you can see, they're, that they're all high flyers. You have a, you actually have Doctor Cadmium, who, in a nice bit of continuity, was also uh, in Who's Haunting the House of Horror. Right? I think they even got the same uh, actor to do the photographing. So yes, you have a, a high flying snobby heiress. Uh, you ha have a, mo you have Ernest Megabuck, Desiree Dollar. Grant Neeson. Oh God! How did you not get sued for that? Um, although it's only the name. Oh, anyway. Also, Philomena Potts. Is that possibly related to Professor Potts from uh, the very first one? The Anna Raka. Anna Raka. Is that meant to be Anna Rice? I don't know. The, as I say, there is a lot of pa par parody here. She's a TV presenter of the Jokes on You, and apparently very chatty, which is obviously very good for a mystery. And obviously you have the housekeeper who's dressed in Victorian style, even though this um, this is clearly set in the present day, and a chef from Zack Attack itself. You have a page from the newspaper of World News, so you can sort of learn behind Zack Attack -y and what uh, what's going on back there. Ooh, Magnate's lo love bid. So yes, uh, obviously Grant Neeson uh, sort of uh, putting his charms on a princess there. A series of photographs from the study where the uh, silver ser serpent was kept before it was taken from the safe. Uh, and all of the guests were gathered there, incidentally, because uh, the, uh, Ranulf Twining wanted to have a Zack Attack Appreciation Society to uh, celebrate the culture of the fictitious Not Mexico Nation. Uh, and on the back you have seating arrangements, which is very important because no one, because none of the guests knew each other's names before coming. Which they do give a, a, a legitimate reason for why that's the case. So you have to refer to a, to this uh, cryptic seating plan because you have Mr. Neeson w to have seat on A. Raka's right. Must remember, Miss Dollar doesn't eat fish. Uh, Miss Mr. Neeson will sit between two women. So yeah, it's it's a logic. It's a very lo logical puzzle. So you have to work that out. Another playing card with a with a code, which I don't think Ranoff Twiling realizes is a code until the very last page. I mean, come on, it's obvious. Ace of Clubs, and yet it's got a diamond on it. it. It should be suspicious. A map of the English countryside, where this all takes place, called Grim Moor. And obviously you have to use this because the Silver Serpent is hidden somewhere in the countryside. Uh, another diary page of Randolph Twining. And also, you have to work out where everyone's sleeping, because um, there are people moving about in the night, and you have to work, work out where, in what direction they're coming from and where they're going. So whose bedroom did they come from, and where where did they go downstairs? And the, uh, and also people move about, about during the day, so you have to you have to catalogue everything on this uh, map. 
So yes, once you've done all that, and after I once again fa failed to work out um, who was the culprit, I did work out where the um, I did work out where the silver serpent is hid hidden thanks to a, um, a hidden message. Where are the hidden messages? Oh yeah, all the messages are in this scrapbook. Y yes, once you figure out this message here in the blue, you th th then have to, you then work out on the map where it is. Unfortunately, there are two, there are two th there are two possibilities for who the murderer was, and I. Not, not who the murderer, who the thief was, and I was all ready to go and look inside and get my answer booklet. Yeah. Yeah, whoever whoever supplied this to the company where I bought this did not put the... Uh, they did not put the answer and solution booklet, and that was so annoying. I, I, I did phone up because I bought, like I said, I bought this from one of the third party companies who sell secondhand stuff on, online, and obviously, uh, the, the, it's, it's too, it, they couldn't tra track it that down because they're a massive warehouse. So it, it's a, it's one of those cases where I'm annoyed and there's no one I can really blame, which is the worst type of annoyance. So yeah, this has been... Uh, I spent an hour fanboy gushing over this entire se series of uh, game books, which and game loosely file faxes. And, you know, I... I, I, I do admit I'm probably the only person who finds this even remotely interesting. Um, but yes, if, if you want something that's very challenging for um, uh, uh, for sort of the seven to eleven de demographic, which is what these were marketed at, uh, th then then you should you should try try and get get this. So perhaps even try and work it out with your kid because um, you probably won't get it any more than they do. It, it's all very complicated, and I haven't had a drink for an hour of talking. So. I'm just going to say, you know, keep a lookout for them in se second-hand shops and, and that sort of thing because uh, th they are some of the uh, some of the most unique, most realistic, and uh, most d daring uh, game books I've ever seen. Goodbye.